Hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. I hope everybody's having a great time. So we've been off for about a week, and we're back ready to rock and roll. So it's the 18th of August, uh, 2013. I'm not making any trade calls or recommendations. You and only you are responsible for the trades you may decide to take, and the fact that you're listening to this means you've read, you understand, you accept all the disclosure disclaimers. So I hope everybody's ready to rock and roll this week. Um, I haven't looked at the charts a lot. I just I just came back uh, from a week off, so I just had a quick glance, and I thought I'd do a quick update just so I know, you know, I've had a look at the charts before I come into the office tomorrow morning, and I decided to share that as usual with you guys. Just keep in mind, next week we're still in, in summer trade. I think last week was the normally the quietest ones. We should see some volume start to pick up, some people starting to come back from holidays. Um, keep in mind that the beginning of the week is relatively dead in terms of data. It starts to pick up on Wednesday, you know, with some existing wholesales out of the uh, U.S. And then Thursday is really the, the more interesting days because we got the HSBC flash manufacturing out of uh, China. And then we've got all the PMIs out of Europe, uh, unemployment claims. So then, you know, Thursday, Friday should be a bit more interesting, at least one would hope okay so let's look at a couple of charts I first things first what's going on the yes so everybody's looking at the yes so basically we talked about we left out we're looking about these 1700s that it was uh you know it was clearly attracting we we're looking at 1700s to print and what we said is that if we couldn't hold above the 1700s then we would expect after we went through the traditional stop hunt through the round number you know fairly classical action we'd expect to see some profit taking kick in now what happened you know in summer chop slow market we saw a bit more um, of heavy action taking place and we started to move down we're trading around 1650s okay now I think what most people are going to be looking at going into next week well first of all you've got this uh, 50 back of this most recent leg down which is coming in around these uh, 1629s <clears throat> which will definitely be an interesting to level to watch but I think if this gets heavy a lot of people will be looking more around the 1619s the 1600 psychological level right now you know I think we're stuck between these two big levels with sellers more than happy to sell the 1700s and I would suspect buyers more than happy to buy approaches into the 1600s I think from a bigger picture and again in holiday trade we'd like to move back and look at the dailies and take a bit of a a bigger picture of you I think what a um, something that I'm not a huge fan but you know something we need to be aware is that right now we're uh, looks like we're hovering around this 50 uh, day moving average and a lot of people look at this and you see it's not uncommon for the ES to to bounce around this level you've seen bounces before at this level so this is the first one to watch so look at going into this week these 1650s right if we start to get heavy well you know without making things too complicated for ourselves if you look at the 100 the 100s coming in just ahead of the 1690s and if you look at the 200 moving average it's coming in all the way back down at these 1550s so i think you know in terms of broader big range this is really the base right this is the base probably the the, the bears looking for a much bigger correction. This is some, what they'll be gunning for. I think the key level going into next week, as far as I'm concerned, is going to be, let's just go back onto the four hour chart. It'll be looking, how do we behave around 1650s? If we break down below 1650s, I would expect these 16, 19s into 1600s to attract but I would expect this to find buyers I would expect this to be a buy zone and to the upside if we press aggressively I'd expect sellers to coming in so broadly speaking I'd say 1700 1650 and 1600 that's what I'd be looking at for the ES okay now what's going on on gold gold a very nice action came back to quite nice action and you know just what we said when we pressed below the 1200 everybody was getting extremely bearish we said we would suspect that most people would be coming back towards the later part of the year towards going into December saying that this was really a bargain price and we're so far so good right it's playing out quite nicely we've had this move rotation up broke higher came back down held this base support started to rotate back higher held 1320s 
this previous resistance resistance now acting as support and bam it's going up the big thing here is what our assumption is that we're attempting a range shift right whereas before we were stuck in this 1400 1300 1200 range right and we failed to break the 1200 we're looking at this as the range attempting to shift so basically these 1300s becoming low range 1400s becoming mid range and this rotation we were talking about towards the end of the year etc is 1500 so as long as we hold above these 1300s i'm looking at 1300 as the base 1400 as pivotal this is going to be the mid range and 1500 the top side of this range so right now it's playing out quite nicely silver had a beautiful move it actually held a 50 back pretty much uh, very very nicely the 61.8 held to the pip and and moved back up so very similar to gold but going into the week now watch uh, how price is going to react on any dips you know any dips that finds buyers here in these 1350s into these 1322s uh, expect these 1400s to be the the uh, grab uh, um, you know exert gravital pull for the week looking for price to try and come back into this number okay now what else have we got uh euro gp jpy just stuck here really the levels to watch remain the same uh we talked about this move and we said watch out the 128 is been such an important level for so long you know and you can see on these dips always caught a bit and then we came back down caught a bit again and it's right at 13 130 50 so going into the week for me it's exactly the same thing these uh 130 50 is the mid-range break above i'm looking for 132s daily closes below the 13050 i'm looking at this heavy as potential moving into these 128 so 128 is really the base market really needs to start having daily closes below that to trade heavy if not it's still holding a fairly decent bid tone but it's still all by in a sideways chop what else have we got here aussie aussie very nice move we discussed this i can't remember now because memory um serves we discussed this in the in the free updates i think i'm pretty sure it was in the update we said that we're really not we haven't been interested in trading um trying to catch the aussie long for a long time it was just you know pain trade but then once we broke below this 1900 we said okay now it starts to get interesting because now all of a sudden everybody thinks this can only go down all the longs are reverse short and it's probably time to see some kind of a bounce here right and we got a beautiful little move here 50 back got bought and we're rotating right back into this uh, mid-range of the shaded area now if you look at it on the uh, on the weekly right basically well i mean before we go on the weekly on the daily you can see uh very nice action here we got this break below very aggressive you know so we're stuck in this range we break below everybody gets bearish at low bam lovely reversal candle on the daily and bam moves right back into mid-range where we were hovering so why am i talking about this as mid-range well we were using this weekly candle uh, this weekly chart basically we had high range low range mid range and we're saying as long as we're stuck in here we really weren't interested to do anything once we got the weekly close here we said okay this could either get very very aggressive to the downside or we're looking for uh, daily positive closes for a move back here to see profit taking so this played out quite nicely what i'd be you know from a broader perspective you know nothing much has happened we're still stuck here so the shorts still have a call uh, a case here so keep an eye on this whole area right i think if we get a weekly close back below 90s again this is going to be very heavy but right now it looks like probably price wants to try and take a stab to the upside try and take a stab to these stops here likely clustered here so we start to get daily closes above this level then i'd expect one uh 0 0.95s 96s to come quite quickly um inside here we could see a bit of choppy action keep in mind it's still summer range you know and the this was also we, we we were guided here on the same chart we had the same chart on nzd usd so on kiwi right and this is what we're looking for potentially to play out right what played out on kiwi the fact that we hovered inside this area and once we started to get the closes outside this weekly chop zone it 
an activist support for the rotation higher. So keep an eye for Kiwi. Keep an eye on 8180s into this week. Uh, this is really likely going to be a big bull bear line. Um, so that, that'll be quite interesting to keep an eye out for. Um, what do we got? We got Euro and Cable we need to do. So Euro, uh, not a lot has happened. So we're still in our rotation. You know, reminder, we we're looking at, we we're uh, getting quite aggressively long at 128s, looking for those 134s to, to print. And that's exactly what we got. Right now, market is struggling to hold above the 134s. Again, I wouldn't read too much into it because of the summer chop. Uh, but what you clearly want to look at here, what is going to happen? You know, if we start getting daily closes above the 134s, then our chart is in play as the chart is in play for a move back into the 136 level. OK, right now, because it's summer chop, just keep in mind that this could be very, very choppy inside this hole. And there's some other charts on the blog talking about this range, about this 134, 132. Uh, you could look back on the chart. It even has all the tighter trading ranges on it, I think. Uh, so basically, as long as we don't get daily closes either below 132 or above 134, this could be just the big sideways chop. I suspect we might see some action this week, also Thursday going into the PMIs, but clearly the pressure is to the upside. Um, the shorts have a chance as long as we don't get a daily close above the 134s to try and see a move back into 132 but broadly speaking it's a broader um, chop zone but I'm still looking at it with a slightly uh, bid tone what's going on on cable cable you know very nice we we posted this one pretty much real time on the blog too we had this long here coming down here looking for 155 70s a uh, 50 back 51 held bam into this 200 moving average printed the 123 target so holding quite nicely what's interesting on the cable chart here is that you know massive short squeeze but what's interesting is not only was it very technical but if you look at here basically we've been talking about uh, just before we left off the 157.50s right this is the extension target for the move this is what we're looking for this to continue to extend into this higher level and this 157.50s that's really the big level to keep an eye out for that's what's really interesting because if you go and you flick back on a weekly chart you can see that basically that's exactly where the 200 week moving average is coming in and exactly where market got sold off extremely aggressively like this was the start the big sellers coming in 157.50s all the way back down into these 148s this was a massive move I probably guys who are trading remember this very very aggressive sustained move down so you see how aggressively we've overshot and we're pressed here so you would expect in a healthy market you would expect this to stall here see some sellers coming in and possibly move back maybe into the 155 level too before correcting higher if this is going to behave in a in a healthy fashion but what i wanted to say is keep in mind that if we keep on pressing here and we don't see any retrace and we start to trip stops off here you do not want to stay stubbornly short most likely of course you can do whatever you want because we're not making trade calls or recommendations but i'm just saying that you probably don't want to be too stubborn here short if we start taking these stops and especially if we get a weekly close above this uh a 200 uh, week moving average. So again, the move that we're talking about from the 151 is still in play. The, the targets, short term targets were done. The extension target is at 157.50. So that's really the big level uh, for the week. To the downside, just keep an eye at these 155s because that's where the 200 day moving average, that's gonna be support here, 155. So levels I'm looking at here, 155 to the downside, 157.50 to the upside for this week. That's what I'm looking at, okay? And before we call it a day, I just got a bunch of emails asking me about two things while I was off. So I just wanted to look at them quickly. So um, basically what's going on on Apple, I hope this works on the recording. So I, I heard there was an I can tweet. I'm really not sure. I haven't been following, but basically, you know, this is pure text because I, I really haven't been following the news and the chart is what we've been looking at, you know, since March. Uh, and basically what we were looking at, we were looking at this uh, buy opportunity for the move back down here, front run of the 200 day and the 50 back of this move, basically from the 79 level all the way into the 700 levels, massive level 
right and we got a good bounce then what happened here we got sold very aggressively we moved back here and we said you know heads up again this 50 back level is holding this 200 is holding you know we start to get some uh, positive closes on the daily on this weekly we're looking for this to press higher very aggressively and we're looking for a move back into uh, 510s anyways above the 500 right and a couple of people were asking me why I was talking about those levels where if you look at here on the chart and the chart should be on the blog right but these were the levels we talked about right pressing here we said okay once we moved into 470s we said if the sellers are going to come in they have to come in here this is where they have to come protecting these whole series of highs and the 200 day right we came back up once we started breaking above this is where we got the aggressive move right we're looking at 480s and then these 515s, 518s. Now, apparently, this is where we got the, the tweets and the ICANN stuff. So, you know, um, I, I wasn't there, so I'm, I don't really know what's happening. But technically, what's going on now, as long as we hold above the 480s, I'm still looking for these uh, 515s, 518s, this whole level. And the big level to the upside, if this gets moving aggressively, then I would say it's the 50 back of this whole move down. Not that I would trade it as a FIB, but that's coming in pretty much around the a 545 level so if you want we can do just for future reference I'm going to do it now uh, I'm going to change it I'm going to put it in a different color so that's potentially you know the bigger swing target for the for the for Apple okay and the last thing is everybody's asking me about the bun too and the only thing I want to say on the bun we're at a massive level here on the bun very very big level you can look at this on the weekly right and you can see how important how important the support is how important these lows are just a reminder you know the move the short move still hasn't completed the short move that we had up we're looking at still hasn't completed the move was this 50 back of the 147.50s pretty much all the way down into 139.90s and the 140s came back we got sold the first time of the 50 back price went against still held the 61.8 retracement and then we're back down stuck here in the summer chop so right here if we start getting daily closes below or especially if we open tomorrow a bit heavy you know we're, the target for the move is 138.10s and the extension target is 136 okay so the short move is still in play which was triggered at 143 the uh, primary target is 138.10s and the extension target is down into the 136s but again keep in mind if you look at on this weekly this is a massive support zone okay massive support zone so it could still be choppy in 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 a summer trade but it, it's it's a big level interesting chart okay so guys, I hope this worked. I'm going to double check it. I hope everybody's going to have a great week. Back in action. We'll be tweeting full force, rocking and rolling as for tomorrow, London Open. Have a great one. Talk to you guys soon and take care. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.